If you turn to Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus said so clearly, if anyone wants to come after me, if anyone wishes to come after me, the rule is absolute, anyone, 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 he must say no to himself. He must deny or crucify or put to death his self, his flesh, and then take up his cross, die to himself, and follow me. That is the absolute unchangeable law for anybody who wants to follow Jesus. So how is it there are so many Christians who think they are following Jesus who do not say no to their own self-will? Do you know how many times self-will is the cause of clash between husband and wife at home? What are the causes of all the clashes in husband and will? It is self-will. My will, it's two people with a strong will trying to live together and they always have clashes. And the only way for them to become one is if both are willing to be crucified with Christ. There is no other way. All the marriage techniques and counseling in the world will not solve the problem. But being crucified with Christ will solve it immediately. And that's not a once for all event because he said, Jesus said, yeah, you've got to do it every day, daily. In other words, if I died to myself yesterday, that was good enough for yesterday, but not for today. I have to take up my cross daily. Now these are the verses which for many years I never heard it being preached in hardly any church. How many times have you heard consistent preaching on taking up the cross every day? If it's something you've got to do every day, don't you think there should be a lot more emphasis on it in Christian churches? When I looked at the baptism of Jesus when he was anointed, even he needed to be anointed. How much more me? Uh, Jesus was born of the Spirit the day he came to earth, but he's anointed with the Spirit 30 years later. Something happened. He didn't become holier in his 31st year than he was in his 29th year. But he had power to do things he never did for 30 years. 30 years he never cast out a demon, never healed the sick, never preached powerful sermons. Now it all came. All of a sudden, it was not a gradual process. It was immediate. So I saw this. there's something in this. The same thing happened to the disciples on the day of Pentecost. So when I looked at the baptism of Jesus, the Lord showed me, give me a revelation on that. Jesus submitted to John the Baptist, putting him under the water. Now, putting, him, putting a person under the water is the way to kill somebody, by the way. And when you read Romans 6, that we are buried with him by baptism into death. So what Jesus, I saw that what Jesus was submitting to there was, I am willing for people to put me to death, physically, on the cross later. But prior to that, myself, you can put it to death by insulting me, by spitting on me, by calling me Beelzebub or Prince of the Devils or calling me a demon-possessed person. They call him all types of names. You're a Samaritan, you're a demon-possessed person. I'm willing to let people insult me, do anything to me, offend me, uh, ignore me, put me to death. And he would not resist John the Baptist baptizing him. That is the meaning of baptism. I submit. When God allows somebody else to put me to death, I will accept it because I know God will raise me up from the dead. That's the meaning of being brought out of the water. I'm sure God will raise me up. Just like he raised him up from the grave. Every time somebody puts me to death, I, I submit to it because I believe God will raise me up. And I'll experience the power of his resurrection in a spiritual way. And then the anointing of the Holy Spirit came upon him. And what the Lord spoke to me, I have never forgotten for the last 55 years. The Lord said to me, if you choose this way of death to self, my power will rest upon you, always. In your life, when you preach, whatever you do. But the day you decide not to go this way, my power will depart. It means that if I don't take this seriously, this 
going the way of the cross and cutting off confidence in self, putting my flesh to death in the different situations when I'm provoked, when I'm tempted, when I'm tempted to pornography, watch pornography. And that's the old flesh again. My old self will saying, have a look at that and what to do? Put it to death. Run away from it. When I'm tempted to respond in the same way somebody speaks to me in anger or evil or any other way. <laughs> Submit like Jesus did. Let, let that fellow bury you. Let that fellow kill you. Let him put you to death. There will be a resurrection. I guarantee that you'll experience. Because God will never allow somebody to put you into that water without pulling you out. Definitely. I've experienced it again and again and again and again. 